Gabriella Turner lived in a small town in northeastern Wyoming. That region was rightfully considered one of the most picturesque corners of the country, and those who have visited at least once could never forget the grandeur of its forests, the beauty of its mountain ranges, and the sound of the full-flowing rivers. Gabriella lived in a small house, located at the very edge of the forest. Despite the fact that the locals considered the old woman an eccentric recluse, she never refused to help those in need. Mrs. Turner knew her way around healing herbs and potions well, which she successfully used to treat any disease. Most of all, the old woman disliked her lonely evenings in front of the fireplace, which she spent knitting to while away the time. That evening was no exception, except for the fact that Mrs. Turner's dog, Willie, kept barking loudly for some unknown reason. What's happening? Is he sensing some sort of danger? Maybe there's some predator wandering outside looking for food. Flashed through the old woman's head. Since the dog wouldn't stop barking, Mrs. Turner had to get up from her chair to go to the door to take a look outside. Hey, Willie, why are you barking? The old woman asked. The dog went silent for a moment and then wagged his tail as if to answer his owner. But then he started barking again and looking towards the old barn. Once upon a time, when Gabriella Turner was young and full of strength, she used to keep a farm, but then her advanced age and a bunch of chronic diseases caused her to give up on that. Now, all she had left were a dozen chickens, Willie the dog and Tom the cat, who went into the forest once in a while to hunt mice and other small rodents. Did a fox climb into the chicken house? Willie is going crazy. There's definitely some predator in the barn, the old woman thought and closed the door behind her. But since the old woman didn't hear the chickens clucking, she concluded that the fussy birds definitely weren't in any danger. The old woman's thought process was rather logical, since the chickens would hardly have stayed quiet in the face of mortal danger. Having decided to check the barn in the morning, Mrs. Turner came back inside, locked the door, and went to bed. Willie, however, didn't calm down and kept barking until the very morning, and only then did he finally let his owner sleep in peace for a little bit. Gabriella dreamed of her late husband, Frank. In her dream, she was standing next to their son, Michael, looking towards the woods. Michael Turner was killed two years ago. He was ambushed in the forest while doing rounds on his territory. Since the man worked as a ranger, Protecting the forest and its dwellers for many years, he'd made a lot of enemies. Someone said that Michael was killed by poachers, while others believed that it was the fugitives who somehow wandered into the neck of the woods. Whoever did it, they shot the 30-year-old ranger in the back, which was strange in itself. At first, the local sheriff started investigating this case rather enthusiastically, but then quickly cooled down because of the lack of evidence and a couple of months later, he was forced to admit that he couldn't find the killer. The news of the death of his only son had a very bad effect on Frank Turner's health, which wasn't that great to begin with. He survived his son Frank by only six months and died in his bed from a massive heart attack. Thus, Gabriella suddenly lost her entire family, who were the meaning of her whole life. After the death of her husband and son, the woman withdrew into herself and became unsociable. Sure, she still went to the store to get groceries once in a while, but she didn't do it more than twice a month. The locals never forgot the deceased Michael Turner and respected his mother, who they believed had raised a real hero. When Gabriella woke up in the morning, the first thing she did was go to the barn to see what it was that had been bothering Willie so much. Opening the door, the old woman expected to see pretty much anything, but not what was actually there. Inside the barn, Mrs. Turner found a bleeding she-wolf lying on the straw-covered floor. There was a gunshot wound in her back, but it seemed that the bullet had only grazed the animal. However, there was something else about the wolf that surprised Mrs. Turner. The sides of the predator were rounded and heaved heavily in time with her intermittent hoarse breathing. Dear God, you are pregnant, Mrs. Turner exclaimed. The she-wolf lifted her head and threw an anxious glance toward the old woman. Don't worry, you poor creature. I will help you, 
You'll be fine, Gabriella said with tears in her eyes and went to get a couple of things from the house. Soon, the old woman returned and treated the wound on the wolf's back. Having applied anti-inflammatory ointment, she prepared from medical herbs and roots. Then, Mrs. Turner gave the predator some warm milk and covered her with the blanket. The old woman knew that attacks on livestock had become more frequent in the area, and local farmers blamed the wolves for them. Edward King, a former avid hunter and a rather wealthy man, was especially outraged. Even when Michael Turner was alive, this quarrelsome man gave him a lot of trouble because he dabbled in poaching from time to time and dreamed of killing off all the wolves in the area. After the ranger's death, there was no one to stop the poachers because no one wanted to risk their life and work on such problematic territory, which seemed like a real battlefield. This gray beauty must have fallen victim to Edward's criminal plans, the old woman thought sadly. Mrs. Turner knew that a young ranger who had previously served in the Marine Corps had recently been appointed to replace her son. Hopefully, he'll be able to restore order if they don't kill him sooner, the locals said in an undertone. Unbeknownst to herself, Mrs. Turner grew very attached to the pregnant wolf, whom she named Lady. The gray predator never showed any aggression and quietly endured all the dressing changes and other procedures. Lady must have understood that the old woman wanted to help her, so the animal didn't seem the least bit anxious around her. Meanwhile, the situation in town got worse with each passing day. That was mainly because the local farmers were getting very tired of losing livestock, while Edward King used this opportunity to get them even more worked up and call for the extermination of all the wolves in the area. Gabriella Turner understood that it was sheer nonsense, since wolves couldn't raid the town every day and slaughter so much cattle. Ethan Hill shared the woman's opinion. He was the new ranger who came to replace the late Michael Turner. Having explored the territory near the castle paddock, the observant man didn't find any traces of wolves, which meant that something else was going on. Unfortunately, his opinion didn't change the minds of the local hunters, who all fell under the influence of Edward King. Only by destroying this gray threat will we ever be able to live in peace, said the rich man, who unfortunately gave great speeches. That's right, we need to exterminate them all, every single one of them, the tipsy hunters shouted. And only Gabriella Turner shook her head and didn't believe a single word out of Edward King's mouth. She was confident that he was pursuing his own goals. Even more worried the old woman was for the well-being of her gray guest, who was getting better by the second and was due to give birth to her little pups any day now. Mrs. Turner was right. One day, she went to the store to get a loaf of bread and a carton of milk. And when she returned, she saw four little fluffy creatures in the barn, warming up by their mother's belly. Well, congratulations, dear, the old woman said, smiling. Meanwhile, despite all the protests of the young ranger, Edward King organized the extermination hunt in the surrounding forests. The day was filled with the sounds of rifle shots, dogs barking, and hunters screaming. Ten wolves fell victim to Edward's insidious plan. Ten unfortunate creatures would never get to howl at the moon again. According to the hunters, most of the wolf packs managed to escape the ambush, avoiding the trap set up by them. It's fine, we'll get them anyway, we just need to take a breath. We don't have enough people here, so we should probably invite hunters from neighboring towns to block all the escape routes for the wolves," Edward said, shaking his gun angrily. Realizing the danger that loomed over Lady, Mrs. Turner tried to be as careful as possible and avoid drawing any unnecessary attention to herself. I should probably give the pups more milk. They must be hungry, the old woman thought, heading towards the barn. But what Gabriella saw inside shocked her. Gabriella stood there in disbelief, looking at at least a dozen wolves that had nestled comfortably around Lady and her offspring. You're one smart lady, queen of the wolves, the old woman whispered. Having recovered from the initial shock, the old woman realized that the wolves had probably found shelter in her barn during the raid organized by Edward King. Mrs. Turner realized that Lady could have led her relatives to her hiding place, 
knowing that the kind old woman wouldn't harm them. Well, you can wait out danger here. I don't mind. Just don't hurt my Willie. He's already exhausted from barking at you all the time. The old woman said quietly and left the barn. The wolf pack lived in her yard for about five days, after which the predators went back into the forest. But Lady and her pups stayed behind. They felt at home in Mrs. Turner's barn. Fearing that Edward King might discover the wolf family, the old woman made sure to take all the necessary precautions to keep them out of his sight. But as it turned out a little later, Mrs. Turner didn't need to worry about that. The thing was that Edward King was facing some problems of his own, which triggered a chain of events that led to a completely unexpected ending. And it was all thanks to the persistence of the new ranger, Ethan Hill, who decided to get to the truth no matter what. Having decided to take an unusual approach, the ranger organized a stakeout at the farm, from which the cattle disappeared most often. Ethan's plan didn't bring any results on the first night, but on the second night, he managed to make a truly shocking discovery. Around midnight, two hunched figures appeared outside Dixon's farmhouse. It was hard to tell if they were humans or wild animals, but there was no doubt that they had come with bad intentions. Throwing up his gun, Ethan shouted, Stop, or I will shoot. The man didn't really know why he chose to do that, but he was used to relying on his instincts more than on common sense, so he allowed his intuition to guide him. Imagine the ranger's surprise when he heard a frightened human voice in response. Don't shoot. There's no need to shoot. I'll tell you everything. As it turned out, the cattle thieves weren't wolves after all, but two villagers suffering from alcoholism and gambling addiction. During the search, one of the attackers was found to have a gun of the late Michael Turner, which suggested that his killer had finally been caught. But the most surprising thing was that the men acted on the orders of Edward King, who wanted to organize illegal logging and mining in the area. However, the would-be businessman couldn't do it unless he got rid of the wolves, who had been living on those lands since time immemorial. After Edward's plans were uncovered, his entire criminal gang was arrested in a matter of hours. Now, the rest of the wolf pack was no longer in danger, and their population would be restored within the next few years. Mrs. Turner and Ethan Hill were the two people happiest about this. It was thanks to them that the unfortunate animals could be saved. About six months after the incident, when Lady took her pups into the forest, there was a knock on the door of the old woman's house. Wondering who it could be, Mrs. Turner opened the door and gasped in surprise. There was a young woman with a little boy of about four years of age. Hello, ma'am. My name is Nancy. I don't know how to put it, but I knew your son. The guest started and lowered her eyes, blushing slightly. Hello, hi, come on in. The old woman invited the guest inside and immediately started setting the table. Mrs. Turner couldn't help but notice that the little boy looked a lot like her late son, which made her heart nearly jump out of her chest. Over tea, Nancy talked about having been in a relationship with Michael Turner when he was at the academy. He wanted to get married. I was already two months pregnant. But then, Mikey had died, Nancy said with a sob and covered her face with her hands. Mrs. Turner's face brightened. Grandson? Can I really have a grandson? Flashed through the woman's head. The old woman surrounded Nancy and her son with attention and care and ensured that they had everything they needed. Now Mrs. Turner's house was filled with the sound of a child's laughter once again and the new ranger Ethan started stopping by to see Nancy. The old woman was very happy that from then on, her son Michael could finally find peace, since Nancy and Bobby were in good hands now, surrounded by love and care. Sometimes, Lady would come by to pay a visit to the young couple. The animal never forgot about Mrs. Turner's kindness. To Ethan's great joy, the wolf pack didn't leave the area which meant that peace and order would finally be restored in the surrounding forests.